In this part of the tutorial, we are going to add the jumping attack because right now, whenever we jump, um, the character will fall to the ground just like this. Um, even though I have speed on, I just press the attack button, then it will fall. So we have to add some functionality to do that. Inside the script, we have the function called handle attacks. And in here, we have this attack. And if we're not attacking, we should do the attack. But we also need to add here is grounded so we will only do this if the character is grounded so now we can't attack in the air so if we save this and jump back into unity here let's try to run it again then you'll see that when you press the attack button nothing is happening in the air now so now we can't attack by mistake in the air and then fall to the ground as you can see the next thing we'll have to do is to add the functionality for attacking in the air. And we'll have to add a jump attack to the character. Um, yeah, we'll have to add a jump attack to the character. So um, I'm thinking if we should do the code before. Nope, let's, let's, let's create the animation first. So out here, we'll have to go to the sprites and we have to go to the characters and in here there should be a jump attack somewhere there we go there is a jump attack right here so select everything that has something to do with jump attack yeah right click wrong here um need to find it again there we go so we have jump attack here and select all of them and then when you have selected all of them you can take them drag them into the scene like we did before Delete the new character, delete the animator, and take the jump attack here and move it into animations. And then just simply rename it to jump attack. When you have done that, you can click on your player and open up your animator by clicking on the animator here. Then we'll have to go to the layers and we have to select the air layer. When we have selected the air layer, we will have to add the jump attack. So go to the air layer and take the jump attack, add it here, and then make a transition from takeoff to the jump attack, from landing to jump attack, and from the jump attack back to landing. We will have to add a new parameter so that we can go from takeoff to jump attack and from landing to jump attack. So click on parameter. Click on the little plus here and add a bool called jump attack. When you have added that, we can start setting up everything. If we click on the arrow between takeoff and jump attack, we'll have to remove the exit time. We will have to go to settings, remove fixed duration, set this one and set the condition as jump attack here to true. Same goes from landing. From landing to jump attack, we'll have to remove exit time, remove fixed duration, set the ten transition duration to zero, and add condition, and set the jump attack as true here. And from jump attack to landing, we'll simply just leave it as it is, so that when we're done attacking in the air, we just go to landing. And we'll just keep it as this. We don't need to, um, we don't need to go to uh, to the takeoff, we'll simply just go to landing if we attack in the air, no matter what. Um, else, we'll also take from default state and make sure that we are not going from jump attack into takeoff. So we can say if the default state is, um, sorry, we are not going from default state to takeoff. Um, when the dump jump attack is true, just click on the little arrow here and say the condition should be that jump attack is also false just to make sure I'm not even sure that this would happen um, but this makes sure that the cycle doesn't go from here to here to here just like that so with that set up we'll have to go to our script because now we'll have to make sure that we use the jump attack first of all we'll have to create a new um, 
bool. So go to the top here. And under jump, we can make a private bool called jump attack. It's our jump attack. And we need to go to our reset function here somewhere, reset values, and say jump attack, jump attack equals false. So that we reset it every time we're done with a cycle. And then we'll have to go to handle input. Um, let's see, where is it? Handle input here. And here we'll have to say jump attack equals true. So when we press the lift shift button, both attack and jump attack will be set to true. Then we'll have to go to our handle attacks function um, down here somewhere. There it is. And we'll have to make an if statement if jump attack and grounded. So if we are using um, is grounded here. So if we are jumping, let's say jump attack instead of jump here just to so if we are supposed to jump attack and we're not on the ground, well, and this that my animator that get current animator animator state info one that is name jump attack. So um, and we need to negative this of course like this like so. So if our if we press the space button, no, sorry, the lift shift button, then it sets jump attack to true. If jump attack is true, and we are not on the ground, and we are not playing the jump attack already, well, then we are going to say animator, my animator, that set bool, jump attack, true. And here is also important that you write the correct name of the, the trigger that we are triggering. And then we can make a if statement underneath. If jump attack. So if jump attack is false and um, we are not playing the jump attack already. If we are done playing the jump attack, then we say my animator that set bool jump attack false so if we're done attacking this is basically when we're done attacking in the air then we're going to set it as false after let's try to save this see what happens here playing the game we can jump normally and land normally as you can see here everything works and I can attack in the air, as you can see here, boom. I just fell down, let's try again. You can see I'm able to jump and attack. Jump and attack. Okay, so we need to fix two things here. As you can see, when I attack in the air, he moves a little um, to the left or behind himself. So we need to fix, fix the pivot point right here. So right now it's centered, so we need to move it a little to, to the positive side. So we need to find the sprites. Um, we need to find the character and we need to find the jump attack here. Here we go. Jump attack and we need to select everything in jump attack. Go to the pivot point, select custom and then say the X is maybe let's try with 0 0.5. Yeah. Let's try 0.5 and apply. So before he moved behind him, see what happens when we attack here. He still moves a little too much to the back. Let's just try with that 0.38 as we had before. Sorry, with that other one. Maybe it's the same. I don't know why it saved the value from before without applying it. Let's try here 0.38. See if we attack, boom, yeah. So now he attacks on the spot here without really moving to side. And now I jumped off again. Um, so there we have a jump animation. But one thing we need to fix, as you can see here, if I jump 
and I attack very close to the ground. He just stops, as you can see here. We jump, attack, boom, and we basically don't make our attack because he just landed on the ground and he starts to play the idle animation. So we would like to make sure that when he jumps and attacks, that he finishes the attacks when he lands on the ground. So we go to our ground attack instead when we land on the ground if we are attacking. So to do that, we'll have to go back to our layers here and to our ground layer. And in here, we'll have to add um, here in here, we'll have to take account into account that we can land and attack at the same time. So we'll have to add a go to animations, take the attack, move it in here again. So now we have two attacks and basically we can rename this one to land attack. So this one is going to be used whenever we land and attack. Um, this one needs to be true, so we right click, make transition, and this one should be running if our, oops, not two, just one. If our uh, jump attack is true, then it needs to transition into this, right? As you can see here right now, it doesn't transition into it when we attack normally. But if I jump and attack, then this one is being played, as you can see here. Now I'm not able to transition away from it, so we need to fix that, but now we can transition into land attack here. So if that's true, well, then we also need to be able to go from land attack to idle here. So right click on it, make transition. Sorry, I think it deselected something, there we go. So, And here we just need to be able to transition back to idle, no matter what, from land attack. And it's only if jump attack is true, Try to see what happens. Attack, boom. Okay. So we can see we have one problem. It keeps transitioning from any state to land attack. And the reason that it is acting weird is because um, if we select the transition here, you'll notice that fixed duration is on, it needs to be off, and the can transition to also needs to be off so that it can transition to itself. So if we try to play it after we have fixed those two things, see if we jump and attack, we'll see that it, it doesn't land and attack again. It keeps, it finishes the attack and goes back to idle here. And if we attack a little closer to the ground, we'll see that it lands actually, actually lands and finishes the, um, the animation. Ah, now I have too much jump speed on. Let's see here if I can try one more time. Uh, you'll see that it jumps, attacks, and boom, it finishes the animation actually like the attack animation finishes off by playing the land attack function animation to the, to the end when we are landing here. Boom, there we go. Okay, so that is the jump attack. Um, in the next video, we can start creating our level so that we can have some one-way triggered um, platforms that we can go to and jump on top of and some other um, small uh, things around the level.